Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Welcome, and here now, Corey Gomez. I am here with the one and the only, the people's champion, Diamond Dallas Page. Good to be on. Bro. How's it going tonight? Oh, it, you know, it's, I just came just off for a great workout at the DDP Yoga Performance Center, and uh, uh, I, I'm doing this beginner class for all the people who come in, and it's the most eclectic group of people ever. I mean, from ages like 18 to like, I had a woman in 76. <laughs> you know, guys in their 50s, 40s, women, same thing, you know, all like 20s. I mean, it's, it's the most eclectic group. And some people are wrestling fans that come in, and other people you know, don't even know who Diamond Dallas Page is. <laughs> which is I find fascinating and fun, you know, because I get to get up on that stage and they don't know the entertainer. They just know this guy who's up there who's been, you know, turning people's lives around and uh, giving people hope. So, uh, you know, it's it, it just, it, it's, it's a great time right now. And fans, for those of you that don't know the story I kind of touched on, I was, uh, Everybody knows it listens to, you know, I remember everybody remembers me probably doing a, a three hour podcast laying on a floor because my back was is so shot. Mm. And I remember uh, my co host laughing at me at the time because I was sitting there moaning, which I, I guess made for fun recording. But uh, mm. when I had uh, ripped my chest muscles, ripped my calf muscle, and I couldn't really work out, um, a gentleman by the name of Bob, Pro Wrestling Blitz, uh, he's, uh, I know that was the company that you did your last diamond cutters for. Mm. That's awesome, yep. <laughs> he, a lot of he told me, uh, he said, you got to do uh, DDP yoga. Another indie wrestler I know by the name of Aaron Williams, you got to do DDP yoga. Hey, everybody, do DDP yoga. <clears throat> so I, I ordered the set and I figured, what the hell, I'm going to, I'm going to email DDP. I, I got enough fan base. Maybe he'll do a quick interview. And you, uh, you actually called me right that same day and we set this up. Which totally blew me away. I think uh, I've told so many people <laughs> this story, like that I've, I've ran into on the streets. Like, look, and DDP called me. Okay, you know, he, he called me. You know, so. Uh, but I've got to say, since doing the workout, uh, the very first day I did it, I felt like my spine go pop, 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 and my back feels so much better since I've started doing this. It's amazing. I'm actually sitting up as to where I'm usually like laying flat down when I do these shows. Well, you know, that's that's what DDP yoga is all about. If anything, you know, the whole DDP live program was never about weight loss, even though you can go on my site or we just had a video that went viral. You know, Facebook is the new advertising platform. And they actually had a thing in business to community. It's a website that's all about business, of course. And they were saying that video is the new word of mouth and then they go on to give you examples and the number one example they used was disabled veteran arthur borman's video and they use that and they tell the story of arthur and i They're like two paragraphs above the video and two paragraphs under it i was like oh my god and then they go into other Videos like, you know, women who do pot, you know, do the uh, 20 minute podcast about video podcast about, um, you know, diapers. And then they had some other company yeah. and how they used it. And then they actually had a guy who reviewed, a top reviewer who reviewed last season of House of Cards, which was unbelievable. But these are how they're saying that, that people are getting the message out there. And our, our video of the disabled vet. We've got like 13 million views on YouTube, but on Facebook, we've got like 40 plus million. And we just put out another one at right around the holidays. And it was of this guy uh, who lost 313 pounds in still over 17 months. And he videoed his original six pictures. And my, my, one of the guys who works for me, Dylan, had put it together. And we had used another version of it like the year before. And I think it got like, you know, 1.3 million views on YouTube and about uh, maybe like 2 million views on Facebook. This year, a uh, whole different version of that video did over 27 million views. 
357,000 shares in less than three weeks. And that's what people, they think, oh, God, it's all about weight loss. Like, no. <laughs> it was never developed for weight loss. It was developed to help you out. You know, help you with your back, your knees, your hips. You know, it, when I blew my back out, and you know, a lot of people don't know I didn't start wrestling until I was 35 years old. My career took off when I was 40, you know, which was in 90, 1996. And when it took off, man, I, I was I was on a road 270 plus days in the ring. And as my career blew up in 97 and 98, I did Tonight Show seven times. I did Hollywood Squares twice. I did Craig Kilborn's show. I did the, the guy, God, what the hell's his name on, on uh, HBO, the, the guy who does the, uh, the political, uh, political... Bill Maher? Bill Maher. I was on Bill Maher's show. I was on Roseanne. I mean, I was on just about... That's what gave Diamond Dallas Page the crossover because I was everywhere. I, I did something with uh, Space Ghost. You know, I mean, it was like crazy how many things I was doing. Still wrestling 270 days a year. And then going at the end of 98, I blew my back out so bad that I, I was told by three different surgeons, you know, spine specialists, uh, that I was never going to be able to wrestle again. And out of how did you uh... That's how it happened, you know. How did you blow it out? Was it a an in-ring accident? Well, you know, it, it, it wasn't, you know, it was really the straw that broke the camel's back. I was in a tag match, me and Canyon. I'll never forget, we were, we were tagging together, and Kev <clears throat> had given me the power bomb, and when it hit, oh, my God, I... I thought I broke my back, and it was it was like a desperation power bar. It wasn't this normal one that was his finish, and I felt like I broke, and I crawled over, tagged, got uh, Canyon in, and said, "Don't tag your back, dude. I am I'm in monster pain." And we'd leave there, and we had to drive back to South Carolina because it was the last show we were on, and I couldn't even sit up. I had to like, yeah, you scooch forward in front of the seat. Yeah. You know, and you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, oh yeah. What had happened in between each one of our vertebrae, the reason why when we're a little kid we can go running and then boom, hit the floor and boom, pop back up and you know, and just fall down the stairs and boom, bounce back up, you know, get played football and just boom and bounce back up. Because we have these amazing shock absorbers. They're called discs, you know, and they're in between each one of our vertebrae, and they're incredibly strong, and it takes a lot to, to, to break them or rupture them, and what you can imagine in between these, you know, these vertebrae that we have, imagine if they were jelly donuts, and you just went, and you squished them, blew them out. Well, now there's nothing there. It's bone on bone. And also, that gel has to go somewhere. Oh, into all your nerve endings, where there's not supposed to be anything, except for what's supposed to be there. And, <clears throat> I mean, it was brutal. And I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. And it was definitely going to be altered if I couldn't wrestle. And, uh, you know, for me... You know, I went into, like, everybody would go into that, you know, woe is me, poor me. You know, I call it emotional gravity because nobody can pull you down more than you. But, you know, once you really understand that it also works the other way, that nobody can pick you up more than you. No one can give you more focus, drive, determination, passion. Nobody. Nobody but you. And that's the one thing that over my years, you know, 60 years, coming up on 61, that I've learned that you have control. You just have to take control. I am writing a book right now that's called Positively Unstoppable, The Art of Owning It. And owning it is more than anything is your mindset. 
and figuring out that you're not going to let anybody like control that and it happens all the time by so many people you know but people who really work at it and I'm going to give a lot of different you know exercises in this book to help people and I'm going to have a lot of you know amazing funny uh, thought provoking anecdotes throughout the entire book you know that will, will give people the belief that they too can be you know positively unstoppable and, uh, you know, as far as the back, you know, the guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga, because that's my mindset at that time, first 42 years of my life, I'm like, I'm not doing that. But now I really couldn't do anything but that. And I was doing the rehab, and I rehab both shoulder surgeries, both knee surgeries. So I knew a little bit about rehab, and I knew a lot about breaking up scar tissue. And I just figured it out over years. And uh, <clears throat> once this, you know, today is known as DDPY, you know, or DDP yoga, uh, once this, you know, really came all together, in less than three months, I was back in the ring. I mean, the same exact thing happened with Jericho. He was in monstrous pain. He ruptured his L4. He couldn't sing. He couldn't, you know, he talks about it all the time in his show. When he's doing my, you know, my advertising ads, he's just telling the truth. You know, when he jumps off the top of the cage last year and he's 45 years old, there's only one way he can do that, you know, and get up and keep going the next day and go to the next town. And uh, in the first five weeks, he was 85% pain-free, and in three months, he was 100% pain-free, has been 100% pain-free since then, and if he starts to get a little cramped up, he just adds a little more programs, you know, just does a little bit more that day that helps break it up like it did for you. It's so great to hear, you know, because really it was really all about, for me, relieving pain and giving me the ability to continue to live the dream. And uh, great to hear that it, it helped you the same way. See, I'm one of those stubborn guys, though. Like, I don't want to do, I was like, I'm not grabbing a chair. I'm not grabbing a table. So the only thing that will happen to me afterwards is be like, God, my wrist hurts so bad like that. But other than that, mm -hmm. no. It's uh, If I have to do a girl push-up, I hang my head in shame. <laughs> well, you know, when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I started, when I started uh, doing them and when I started those three-second push-ups, it was mainly because I couldn't lift at the time. And I had to lower my knees down. You know, and, and and today, I mean, after I watch some of the women today, you know, it's almost like strong. You know, I'm mean, I'm strong like a woman, because I mean, the thing these girls are doing today, you know, is just mind-boggling. I watched some girls basketball the other night, and I was like, wow, these girls are unbelievable today. Soccer, man, there's a lot. You know, our our girls national soccer team who won the, you know, the cup and all that last year, I think it was last year or year before, they could beat just about any guy's team in college. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> these women today, you know, UFC fighters, you know, wrestlers, you know, uh, Flair and, and, you know, and, and the boss, I mean, they're not big, but they are tough as nails. And they are beating their body up at a different level. So what's going to be a problem for them because no women has ever beat up their body the way they do today on any level of any sport. When they get to 40, if they're not doing some kind of yoga, they're fucked. You know, like, they're going to be crippled because they Especially still have at the pace. That yeah, right. At the pace and, the, and, the, and the, the, the abuse. But they we still have a man's brain. And men are so beat up. <laughs> what are they going to be like? Mm -hmm. A woman's never played the game like this on any level. So, you know, I love watching it. And they probably would do it exactly the same. The only thing I would have changed is I would have been doing my DDP yoga program since I was five. <laughs> you know, and I got kids doing it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doing it with their parents. It's pretty cool. 
but everybody knows my son is a wrestling mark, you know, and, and he, he does it with me, but he was a little disappointed the, the first time he did it, and he's, you know, he does martial arts too, so he's got no problem doing anything, you know, even at his age, and he finally looked at me, and he's like, I'm getting bored, and I was like, why are you getting bored? He's like, he has not taught me how to do the diamond cutter on someone yet. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you did you see it on it's out there on the internet. I, I'm a big country fan too and uh my favorite country artist is this guy named Justin Moore. And uh to me he's he's the next George Strait because in this world of the country music that a lot of it's great, but a lot of it's so pop oriented. It's like how the hell did that get on the country channel, man? But you know that is what it is. But Justin, he's old school, you know, and uh, he uh, we become really good friends. And he was in town in Atlanta, and he when he came by to the DDP Yoga Performance Center to because um, because we did a grand opening, not grand opening, but an open house, and he was playing that night. So he came by, he wanted to see it. He was blown away. And so as he's leaving, he goes, you know. Tonight he got a song called I, I, "I'm Gonna Kick," I can kick your ass, and he goes, "I'm calling you out, bringing you up on stage." He goes, "Will you come?" I said, "Hell yeah!" He goes, "Will you sing?" I said, "If you want to call it that," <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, he did. So uh, <clears throat> I was waiting in the wings. He called me out there, and to back up a little bit, now I sing with this guy every day. Like every day I'm singing, you know, in my car, you know, going down the road, whatever. I just love all his music. And, but I sing with him. I don't sing his shit, you know, without him. And when I'm watching as he grabs up this person or that person, puts a microphone in their, in their mouth, and some of them nail it, other people that, 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 because they don't know all the words, you know, <laughs> whatever. And he just holds the mic there, and I'm thinking, is he going to sing with me, right? He's going to sing with me. And then you know, I get out there, and I'm just prepared, just in case. And he brings me out, gives me a great introduction, and the song starts to kick in, and I realize that's my cue. I can kick your ass, you know. <laughs> and, and I just go in this, oh my God. So I, I do it. I, I went way over the top, and you know, I got a great response, but everybody's drunk by this time. You know, at the Fox, they've seen this is the third artist they've seen. <laughs> so they all got a good response going, thank God. So I, you know, I, I, I leave, give him a big hug, walk away. He's like, let's bring him out again. So we bring him out again. And bring in, you know, I go, go to the microphone, bang, do the diamond cutter, blah, blah, blah. He turns around, and I go, give him a hug. He goes, diamond cutter, diamond cutter. So I put my arm, and somebody put him in the face, made him look like you know, the diamond cutter. People can take pictures. And he starts dropping to the floor. Like, he's going to take a diamond cutter. Well, i got to go with him. Because I could have not go. And he took a diamond cutter like you would take a, a, a stunner. And he came down on his ass and then, oh, God, it looked like I broke his body. And, oh, my God, it was so funny. I mean, the plates went crazy. And they just put it up on a uh, couple, couple country artist things. And uh, pretty funny, pretty funny. So then to your son, some I just didn't. I thought I was done, but I do do it on the damn stage. I don't ever do shit like that where I can actually hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, my son was all excited too. I think at first he thought that the uh, the video was going to teach him how to do his wrestling moves. So mm, how old is he? He's only seven. That's perfect. That's a great age. <laughs> He's got to, he's got to, you know, for local shows that I like help advertise or from, you know, or like, uh, you know, give monies to or stuff like that to bring in guys. He's, um, he, you know, they've let him go in the rig and run the ropes and everything. So he just has the time of his life. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, you never We're know, actually man. taking him to, uh, taking him to Illinois here in March. Uh, he gets to meet uh, Drago from Lucha Underground, who's one of his heroes. So he's very excited. Hey, that, that actually, I know, um, 
I know um, Johnny Morrison's there, and um, that's a hell of a talent. Johnny Morrison, like, they, they dropped the ball with him in WWE. I mean, handsome as, as, as you can be, he looks like damn Jim Morrison, but he could, at six foot three, 225, chiseled. I mean, tremendous shape, and could do some of the craziest shit I've ever seen. And stupid strong. I, I, I heard he's doing really good over there with that. But that's the that's what everybody's talking about right now. The Lucha Underground. It's our favorite company to watch. It's funny because I just mentioned when we were doing our uh, rundowns of favorite stuff that uh, he he's actually, I think he is so great because he is the only wrestler that I truly hate because I, the character he plays his bad guy part to the point where even I, a smart 42-year-old man, hate his guts and just want to throw stuff at the TV. So, Are you talking about Johnny yeah, Morrison? Yes, I Oh, that's tremendous. Hate him and uh, Oh, that's you know, tremendous. He, you know, he, he plays that old school plus the new school part and he has this cheating gang and all that and uh now, Lucha is definitely those are some real there's a lot of guys there that I see that were like that Vince didn't want, you know, the NXT they didn't want them or they didn't have their tryout and, and we just <clears> watch it. It's like why on earth would anyone pass on any of these talented people over there? Oh, you know, I have not watched that enough to know, but I'm definitely after after you just sold it like that, and I really do. You know, actually, John's in a movie. Uh, not a movie; it's a it's a show. It, well, it started as it's called Gods and Secrets, and we we haven't done any promotion or anything on it because it's still it's still in the, the editing bay <clears throat> phase. But this guy Adi Shanker, did you ever see the video? Um, on YouTube, it was called Power Rangers Bootleg, and it was a Power Rangers it's, video that was yeah, like R-rated. Was, was it? Yeah, with Casper Van Dien. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I mean, the video, especially for YouTube, was sick. It did like I don't know, seventeen million views, like boom, like right away. Um, <clears throat> I did that, and he did a. Uh, he um, did a, a Punisher, and that Thomas Jane was actually in. That was a oh, uh, uh, dirty laundry. laundry. I was supposed to play. I was asked to play the spot that uh, God, I can't remember his name now. You know, Sons of Anarchy. Um, Trejo. Um, not Trejo. Not Trejo. Um, he used to be the head guy on Sons of Anarchy. <clears throat> oh, um, 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 Pearl Hellboy, Ron Perlman. He wanted me to play that part, but I couldn't because I was on the road and they were filming or whatever. And, you know, Ron, of course, whatever he does is amazing. But I, that, that was, you know, Adi and I have been boys for fucking, got close, coming close to 10 years. And he's only like 31 or 32. And, uh, he, um, he sent me this, this this script. He said, "Pick whatever role you want." I'm like, "Yeah, right. Just tell me what role you want me to be on." And uh, long story short, uh, it's a pretty it's a it's a, it's one of the main leads of the whole thing, and uh, it's turned into this what started as YouTube vignettes that we were doing, that it's just blown into this thing that's. Uh, like an episodic, you know, series. And uh, it's probably got about, I don't know how many episodes is total in it, but, you know, it, it, it's supposed to have a pretty good uh, push coming up. We'll see what happens with it a while. I don't know exactly where it's going to land up, but some of the people that we're talking to, it's pretty sweet. And uh, he has this whole different slant on it. But Johnny is in that with me. And he plays my... Uh, he plays like one of my young proteges who uh, is pretty pissed off at me at the time. And oh my God, some some of the dialogue that he has is pretty funny. You know, he's really busting my balls. <laughs> and doing yeah, some crazy do shit. Yeah. Now, I, you said you've never watched it, and their storylines are beyond ridiculous. Like fighting over a glove, and the glove has like a dead luchador that will... Uh, it will help bring hell to earth and raise other tribes and 
one of the wrestlers is an undercover cop because the the owner is like a drug runner and it's an illegal temple and I mean the storylines are insanely entertaining but yeah Morrison they do all those intergender matches and he's fighting sexy star you know and he won't you know she happened to win a warfare match become the champ and he's cheating to beat this girl you know in real life you know he lay her out in a punch but you're just sitting there and like his you know his worldwide underground comes down and you're like you motherfucker what are these people helping you for and all that like it's just yeah and usually I don't ever get like that but yeah, I found myself and my son were just screaming at him oh my god that's awesome you'll love that <laughs> you'll love that so he's got a 7 year old cussing him and a 42 year old cussing him oh that, that's priceless family bonding brother and the, and the next day, my son goes to school in his one of his WWE T-shirts. <laughs> oh God, buddy! Yeah, I think you. Would, I think a lot of those guys are going to need DDP yoga pretty soon. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, where can people buy? You know, like I remember at first, like I went on to you know just Google DDP yoga, and it took me to your site, but. Is is currently is that the only place that it can be bought right now is through your website? Um, yeah, that or you can get and it's more expensive. You know, I, have you seen the app yet? Have you gotten you know? The, I have the app. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like there's not there's no fitness app out there like ours. You know, when you take the extensiveness of you know the workouts at all different levels, and I'm constantly like tomorrow morning at. Nine o'clock East Coast time, I will be doing a uh, a live workout, and it's a, it's a beginner workout. Period. It's taking what I call the diamond dozen, and putting it all together and making it a fifty minute workout. And uh, again, I've got all different shapes and sizes. People using chairs like Jake's, uh, you know, Jake's touring all over with his you know his uh, unspoken word. And there's a comedian who comes on before him named Alex, he's down, he started at 550 pounds, and he is down 160 pounds so far, and Jake is the one who inspired him, you know, to get his shit together, which was really cool, but um, he was there, and he, he uses a chair when he works out, and then, you know, like, there's, there's other people who are also using chairs, but then there's other people who are in great shape, don't need any of that shit, you know, and, uh, so I'm going to be actually doing that tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, or if it's Wednesday, depending on what time you air this. Um, but it, then after that, it goes on to the, you know, onto our DDP Yoga Now site. So answer your question, people, a lot of people get it on iTunes. You know, a lot of people get it on Google Play. And you won't find a better deal anywhere but our, on our site on DDP Yoga Now where, because you gotta pay more money, because you know, Apple and Google Play, they take 30 cents on every dollar <laughs> because of their vehicle. I can't even imagine how much uh, Apple makes off of, you know, off of people's apps. I can't even imagine it. Um, but uh, Especially if you're making like a million, they're probably making 300. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> that's exactly the what they're making. And that's one company. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, I just can't imagine, you know, the, with the big, like, these games and stuff. And uh, I'm sure they have something that cuts it down to 20 or 15%, you know, as you spend more if you're a big, big, big company. And we're still in the embryonic stages with the apps because we sell so many DVDs. You know, people, you know, they're still afraid of the app to go to the TV when it's the easiest thing ever if you've got Apple TV or Google uh, or Google TV you know or you just have a, you know, a um, Chromecast or whatever um, you know Roku I mean it, we're probably about two years away from everybody feeling comfortable with that but I think we're going to last because some of the older people who love it when I say older I mean my age like you know late 50s 60s they're like you know, fuck apps. Give me the DVD. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, a, I'm <clears throat> old school. I want my DVD when I watch a movie or exercise. Yeah, and, and that's what people want. But, like, get the thing about the DDP Yoga Now app, like, there is a ridiculous amount that we probably have 
on there now. I haven't counted them, but I would I would say instead of the fifteen workouts that we have and that people invest in, I'll bet you we have a hundred workouts. And if not, it's damn close to it. I would say, but I would think it's there's a hundred workouts on there now. And they go everything from DDPY for kids to DDPY for mamas to, you know, to friggin' using a chair, chair warriors to extreme psycho shit. <laughs> it, it always reminds me from Motivational Mondays when you're cooking in the kitchen, you know, my phone's always going off. It's like, who's calling me? Oh, it's DDP time. What's the app telling me? <laughs> you know, and <clears throat> those Motivational Mondays, you know, they... They really make a difference for people. Everyone needs motivation from time. Everybody does. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody needs a little kick in the ass, you know? What, um, I have to ask you this just because, um, well, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't, but, uh, for the longest time, everybody remembers that I was doing a segment called What is Sunny Doing This Week? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about reaching out to her? Um, or do you not know her? I don't really know her. Okay. And, and and I, but it being a girl, you know, um, I'd have to have like like Medusa is a warrior, and she has, she doesn't need any you know help at all, and she's she's the, she's one of the strongest women I know. Um, you know, uh, and and one of my very good friends for years. But if it was her. It, it would be different, you know. I probably, I probably would, but you know, she's freaking stronger than I am. <laughs> Dude, I mean, she just is stud. I just talked to her a couple of days ago, and uh, but you know, I have, I, she was I, one of the original people I managed was Medusa, you know, along with Bad Company, and uh, yeah, they were part of your Diamond Stable. Yeah, right. Stud Diamond Stable, Exchange. or I can't Diamond, ex Diamond Exchange. Yeah, Diamond Exchange. Diamond Exchange. Diamond yeah. Exchange. And it was, you know, me and her, we just bonded immediately. And over the years, I mean, you talk about a woman who's, you know, a stud. I mean, she'd go into two men's worlds wrestling before any of these women like today. Like, she was, she was the trailblazer. Her and Sherry were like the real trailblazers uh, that really put it, you know, kept it alive until something happened with it. Um, but, and then went into, you know, the monster trucks. She's a superstar there. And she's flipping these cars in the air, jumping 40, 50, 60 feet in the air. Like <clears throat> like wrestling, you can't take gravity. She's coming down. Blah, 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 blah. I don't care how big those tires are. You know? And this girl, you know, she's in her 50s now, and she's still knocking it, and she still looks amazing. I was going to say, she looks great. She does. I've gotten to be buddies with her husband who's over in Afghanistan right now and you know I turned Eddie and his boys on to the app you know they love it because they're, they're beat up <laughs> you know you're in the military you've been there for 30 years you know you, you have wore that body out you know for the military because <laughs> you know they, they don't ever think about that you know especially some of these sergeants who are in their mid 40s you know and they're you know they're they're, they're lifers and God, they're beat up, man. You know, their their bodies need DDPY badly, and that's who I originally really developed for: cops, firemen, and military. You know, when you when you see some of these wrestlers now, or, or just people that contact you that are really in in, in dire straits, so to speak, or in a bad place, um, what makes you decide, like, whether like, okay, I'm gonna I'm going to take this guy in. Like, like we did with Jake or Scott, or, I mean, do you have to be like, uh, or do you feel more comfortable doing it with your friends, or have you ever reached out to anyone just, you know, that you barely knew and told them that you needed to help them? You know, I did just recently. Um, I, I was never, you know, you know, tight with, with Leon White, you know, Big Van Vader. I was never tight with him because mm -hmm. he was there when he was on top of the world, and I was still bottom guy so but when I would talk to Leon occasionally he was always super respectful to me and vice versa and I would see him on the independent roads occasionally and he'd called me 
about some questions about Shark Tank and stuff. And anytime I could help anybody, especially any of the boys, I'm going to give them whatever time they ask. And But we never really had a, a real, like a strong relationship. Like Jake and Scott, I got a long standing relationship with those guys, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, Leon in November had his heart diagnosed of having um, you know two years to live because he has wore his heart out you know just good think about you know all of high school all of college you know all American college football player uh, you know five years in the NFL then straight to professional wrestling and not just professional wrestling in America in Japan where they beat the fuck out of each other you know, he was definitely a hard, hard hitter when he was, you know, when he first started. Definitely real hardcore. And moon salty off the fucking top rope at three hundred and fifty fucking pounds. You know, Bam Bam Bigelow is the only other guy to go do that shit. And uh, he, um, so I, I, I heard about it, and people, of course, they come. You know, will you please help? You know, and he's just their because they care about that individual, which is really amazing. And, you know, that's what helps turn Scott and Jake around, was people caring that they would like, why do they care about me? I don't care about me. But they do, because they've made such an impact in so many people's lives. And um, uh, so I reached out to Leon. I sent him an email. And uh, I said, hey, man, I said, if you need some help, you know, I've, I've got. I, I'd like to. I, I'd like to help you out. And about a week later, he called me back and he said, "Hey, man, thanks a lot. You know, uh, you know, you know. Uh, we were playing phone tag, and what would end up happening is he would come out here, and I don't put people in my house to stay anymore. It's more like a bed and breakfast, <laughs> you know, for health and fitness. <laughs> and I'll bring you in for a week, you know, and then you know we've got people coming in now all." all the time and uh, <clears throat> um, the uh, we stayed we spent a week I brought a son he brought a son in too and I, and I invited his son Jesse and um, hell of a kid really good guy and um, Leon his back is really killing him and it would have been perfect timing because he had an epidural that's what Jericho had so now you can strengthen it and not be in as much pain because you can strengthen it by the time the epidural wears off you can start to you know you're not in as much pain so you just keep moving forward well Leon is old school no pain no gain you know at 61 he's friggin you know he feels better because the epidural he goes right to the gym and starts doing what he always did and he blew it out and now the pain's excruciating and you know, because of getting him to eat cleaner food and to feel just better about himself in general. Um, you know, he came out and spent a week with me and you really don't know really who, you know, because if you don't know me like Jacob Scott did, you know, and you're just coming in like, I guarantee you, Leon was blown away because my wife is amazing. Her name is Brenda and she really, because of, beating cancer without chemo uh, she is like you know she really knows her shit about food and I do too but she explains it more eloquently than I do and, <laughs> um, and she's very knowledgeable so I let her do that and you know after dinner and stuff and you know I'm cleaning up while she's talking to her you know Leon and Jesse and <laughs> the first night Leon goes you do the dishes and then sometimes, and then the next four nights that we're having dinner every night, every night, well, I, she's explaining the food because repetitions of the mother are learning, especially when you're super green to it. You don't know what real food is. Mm -hmm. Why you want to eat food that God created as opposed to genetically modified food and how much it'll help heal your body, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Daddy goes to me, goes, do you do the dishes all the time? <laughs> and I looked at her and I started laughing. I said, <laughs> No, I said, but she's teaching you right now. She's trying to smarten you up why you want to eat 
the real food, like what we eat, how much it's going to help heal you. And maybe you don't have two years to live. Maybe it's three, four, six, eight, ten. I don't know. But I know you keep eating shit. That doctor's going to be right. You know, that I do know. And, uh, it was it was a great you know me and Leon. Now I would say Leon is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> you know because we both bonded in uh, mutual respect for each other. You know. Do you uh, do you still keep in contact with a lot of the wrestlers, a lot of the boys that uh, you know from WCW? Austin, Austin and I talk all the time because we started together like in WCW. Um, you know a lot of people don't know that you know. Um, <clears throat> Triple H too uh, back then we started you know in the beginning he was terrorizing coming in I was just turned into a wrestler at 35 and a half you know um, but the guys I stay in touch with stay in touch with Nash not as much as I'd like but I stay in touch with them um, um, of course Scott and Jake all the time um, Austin we talk every couple of days a couple of weeks uh, very rarely it goes too long without us calling each other up and you know, bust each other chops, talk, you know, um, Mick Foley, I'm super proud of his, uh, his, his results, you know, um, pretty he amazing. Great. Yeah, he really does. I, mean, I was watching the show last night and, uh, damn, I mean, just the way he's moving, that's it. And the thing that really blew his mind, because I had you take these pictures and, you know, do, you know, go see a doctor. So, you know, Mick, when I met Mick, you know, he, he was 6'4". And the thing, last time he came down here to the crib, and uh, he was coming through town, I can't remember where he was going to, but he stayed for the couple days. And um, what really freaked him out is he was down to 6'1 and a quarter. And the last time he went to the doctor, he said, you know, doc, I feel taller. Can you give do the height for me? He's six three. Now, when you can't straighten your spine out, you know, and you can't roll your shoulders back, well, of course you're going to lose height. But when you can do that, you're going to gain height. And that's that's where he's at right now. He's six foot three, and pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I, I was always a Mick fan. And, and you know, meeting him and um, seeing him live, you know, everybody always like, oh, this big fat guy. It's like, he might have been fat, but he wasn't fat. He's a He was a big, big, burly guy. Yeah. He, yeah. he, does, he does, he's not like slovenly looking when you see him, well, unless he's in his sweatpants and his gimmick there. But uh, no, he actually doesn't look like a guy you'd want to mess around with. Yeah. And uh, you got a hard goal, though. You know, big time. And uh, I'm just, again, another guy. You know, I'm glad to be a part of the uh, response, you know, and uh, and he'll be the first one to put it out there without the EP yoga. He ain't where he's at right now, which is pretty cool, you know. I mean, if you knew how hard it was to get one of the boys to do your program, without Chris Jericho, never would happen but because Chris was so grateful he cannot stop telling people about it I mean I get an email from Chris every couple of weeks or no more than a month and it might be some guy he's on tour with from you know you know from friggin whatever band Slayer or, you know whoever Metallica you know whoever he you know he has uh, been on the tour with he'll call me up and they will say, hey, can you send him the program? I'm like, boom, done. You know, whatever he wants, that'll were you come in, up. Were you and Jericho friends in WCW? We were acquaintances. Again, you know, we. I was. I would. I would consider him a you know a friend because he's one of the boys. But we didn't really have the you know the the uh, respect. We always had respect for each other, but we didn't have the um, the connection that we have today. You know. Did a great interview with him, which I haven't put up yet. We filmed it. Um, I guess he was in town like two weeks ago because I'm like Chris, you're in town filming. You're, you're doing your work. You're doing your uh, 
your new album. He said, you've got to come by and see the place. So after he got done uh, recording one night, he came by, and like Austin and everyone else who walked in the DDP the Performance Center, his jaw hit the ground. And then I explained to him, I'm like, Chris, you got a new album coming out. You're going to be looking, you know, to shoot a video. I said, look how big this green screen is. We can do anything on it. I said, let us do one of your videos. And I'll do it for him for next to nothing because he's my boy. But also, it'll give us another thing. Because eventually, next year by this time, we'll be a full-blown production company. And when people aren't at DDPO working, the second crew will come on and start editing and producing, you know, whether it's commercials or videos or music videos or whatever. We'll be doing it. Did he beat up Bill Goldberg? You don't have to answer that, but inquiring <laughs> minds really want to know this story. That never happened, but the but I'll tell you what, Chris is one of the toughest <laughs> sons of bitches. He don't take no shit from anybody. I mean, Chris Jericho is a tough motherfucker who doesn't take any nonsense. And well, you don't care, Bill. It wouldn't matter if it was Brock Lesnar. <laughs> you know, Chris Jericho's just one of those. He's a tough Canadian. You know, he just he he is that guy. More, more than anything, he'd rather fucking have a drink with you. You know, he, he, he's not a kind of guy who's going to try to fight somebody, but at the same time, if you fucking are pushing it the wrong way, fucker will be in your face pretty quickly. Uh, what what really, I love, yeah. I've, I've, got, I've got to see two times, one just a few months ago when he was feuding with Ambrose, I've got to see Jericho close Raw live, and, and that's what people really should see is and the camera stop rolling and he starts working on bits that he's going to use for the next week on TV. Right. That's when you really get to see some of the most creative stuff ever. Yeah, and he's on such a roll right now because, like, he, like, like dude, where did the list come from? He says, I was fucking around. You know, he goes there yeah. freaking start wearing the scarf. You know, because he wears a scarf. He goes, like, this is the coolest thing ever. But he goes, he just fucking, he just tried to get to eat. You know, you stupid idiots, you know, like, and now because he's been on, it's sort of like when, well, for, for my career, you know, at the end, they don't want to boo me. They want to cheer me. Ric Flair. They don't want to boo Ric Flair. I don't care what you do, Flair. We love you. <laughs> you, you know, there's certain guys who still want to be, and Jericho, of all of us, still gets the best heel response up till recently. And now they just love him. You know, and Vince is letting him do whatever the fuck he wants because it works. <laughs> you know? And to me, I love when when he gets when for a while when him and uh, Owens were like going back and forth with uh, Enzo and Cass. I thought that was priceless. Oh, yeah. And there, there, there's two cats that have, you know, have come up, you know, and to watch them in one year, you know, get to where they got and a lot of the shit they do is repetition but that's what grabs the people and gets them involved and then fucking Enzo just <laughs> I, I, I remember walking up was it last year it might have been two years ago I think it was two years ago I walked up on Austin and he was talking to Enzo and he was putting I think it was two years ago and he was putting Enzo over like a motherfucker. And Enzo's fucking jaw was just on the ground. <laughs> like, is Steve Austin really putting me over like this? <laughs> I've seen that a good buzz going. But Steve don't put anybody over unless they're over with him. Which is a handful of guys. Because he'll be the first to bury someone too. And right to their face. You know, he's Steve Austin. <laughs> he can get away with saying whatever the fuck he wants, you know? But um, but he really was putting Enzo over big time. Big time. So um, yeah. I'm happy for those guys. And I, you know, I always hear people say, oh, man, it wasn't the same, man. When you guys were out there, you know, I just don't watch it anymore. So you should probably start watching again, you know, because they're doing some good stuff. You know, some stuff is just hokey, but that's what fucking is working. 
you know, for them right yeah. now. And uh, you know, these young guys, freaking, and this 205 class shit, man, like, wow. You know, but none of that is ever happening in WWE without Eric Bischoff starting the cruiserweight That's, division. I, I, that I can't disagree. That was my favorite part of, uh, of Nitro for a while, getting the Mysterios and the Benoits and the oh my God. Uh, Malencos and Guerreros. And Jericho, he was pretty killer in that. In Jericho, finding, that's right. No one, no one, I don't think anybody read it better himself as much many times as Jericho has. He's like, <laughs> Jericho uh, is the um, William Shatner of, uh, of professional wrestling. <laughs> what I mean by that, William Shatner is, is still God. You know, eighty yeah. something. You know, and he he was the greatest character ever of William. You know, Casey Kirk, and just he's reinvented himself so many different times. And that's what Chris keeps getting to do. And you know, and I said to him, I said, you know, in my interview, I said, it was uh, is this your favorite times? He said, well, you know, he goes back. I don't want to say two thousand six or two thousand eight. He said that was a really amazing time. He said, but it's between this and that right now. You know, because it's just coming so natural to him. And I'm just, again, so happy that I can be a little bit a part of it, <laughs> you know? Because I'll tell you, you ain't in the ring without doing the program. You know, and uh, anytime he does any kind of spots on his program about what we're doing, you know, he, all he does is speak from the heart, you know, and that's what's beautiful about it, you know? All right, kid, one more no, question. I've I got to go. My wife's killing me. Like, come on <laughs> I, I've told all my fans you know that they need to try this you know, we've got wrestlers we've got endorsements where can everybody listening go to get DDP Yoga um, what's the website DDP, address ddpyoga.com uh, the app right? everything's 25% off right now and I'm going to keep it like that uh, for a little bit but <clears throat> it'll never be cheaper than that <laughs> and, and <laughs> If people are DVDs, and a lot of people, like every day, I know where, how many people got to the program and invested it because of Chris Jericho, Austin, HBO, uh, Shark Tank, uh, an article they did in you know, Wall Street Journal. Uh, I, I know where it all comes from. My videos, uh, Arthur, whoever, I know where it comes from. The number I would say it's either number one or number two every single day is friends and family. Meaning that doing what you're doing, saying like, it comes from the heart, you know, like this really helped me. It could help you. And, uh, you know, that's really amazing because now for DVDs, <clears throat> it's 25% off our two top DVD rights combo pack and max pack. But if you want to give it to somebody, that next pack is 50% off. You're already 25% off. So like, we're, we're making it so people, because we want, the more people are doing our program, of course, the better. And because they're going to keep telling people about the program. And I always tell people, don't listen to a fucking word I have to say about DDP Yoga. Go online right now. Go to at real DDP or at DDP Yoga and read what people write on Twitter or go on Facebook and there's a DDP Yoga Facebook and I just want to pull it up for a second while I'm talking because I think it's all one word um, and it's got like 16,000 um, let's see I think it's two words let me see it try it that way um, it's got like 16,000 people who go on there and like the page and out of that, it says private group, but as soon as you hit like the page, it accepts you. Read what those people write. I mean, <laughs> right now, I'll, I'll close with this. There's a list, and you know that it's called The Top Tens. You've seen them, right? Mm -hmm. Man. This, they must have 100,000 The Top Tens. Go to The Top Tens <laughs> and, and, uh, and then put in best home workouts. Number three will be P90X. We've got about 60 some, 70 some comments. The number two spot is Insanity. And they got about 80 or 90 comments. Number one, 
DDP Yoga, over 900 comments. And I don't mean wow. one-liners or one word like awesome. I mean paragraphs. Like, you can't make people chant DDP or Stone Cold or Goldberg. You can't make them do that. They have to be moved to care about the character. Online, you can't make nine over 900 people write these long <laughs> paragraphs because they've been moved. Like, that's impossible unless the people are really passionate about the product, which is DDP Yoga. So thank you, my friend. It was great to talk to you. Uh, Appreciate that, you know, that you are getting something out of this and then got a hold of me. And like you said, I pick up the phone and called you. I call people every day. I call people every day who get my program. Today I called a girl who scale was broke. I, she came down to my retreat. Her father's down like 70 pounds. He can move around now. He's beat up. He's in his 60s. He, like he's, he, you look at him, you go, that's an amazing transformation. His daughter's name is Elise, and she's a big girl. And she is down from like 380 to 323, and she thought because her scale was broken she was 270 so in her mind no matter what was real she thought she was 270 and felt great but felt great about herself and she's losing this weight she's down 100 pounds well then she realized when she went on a scale somewhere else that that scale was broken and she was only down like 50 pounds and was still 323 and of course something like that's going to crush someone but one of the things that I really help people understand with my motivational Mondays and you know my, my lecture I did on living life at 90% and how you literally can own it you just have to believe it and then start working towards that at some point, she kicked out of the emotional gravity and thought, what am I bitching about? Okay, I'm still 323. I'm not 380 anymore. And I felt great. I felt great about myself. You know, I, I think I look pretty damn good, especially being over 300 pounds. Oh, she's a big girl. Mm -hmm. She's a tall girl. And what am I beating myself up for? I'm doing good. I'm going forward. And it, the, the weight number may have changed but I haven't changed at all you know and to have that to snap out of that she wrote me this letter I was like wow I picked up the phone and I call her and I'm like at least that was awesome that you could turn it around just like that and understand that it's not the number it's how you feel it's how you look and you know that eventually you're going to own that number you know, it just was like, that's what DDP yoga is. You know, it's a lifestyle change, you know? It's a lifestyle change that I would recommend. And fans, you know I don't steer any of you guys wrong. I recommend you get it in a heartbeat. You, you got nothing to lose. The only thing you can get out of it is feeling better. All right, brother. Thank you so much for your time. And let, let's touch base again um, when you hear about that... Uh, since you are the movie man, you know, that's when you hear that the uh, Gods and Secrets is actually coming into the forefront. I want to thank Dam and Dallas Page for being here tonight. I want to thank all of you for listening. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. You have been listening to the Chronicles of Hollywood History. Thank you from Gomez Richmond Productions. <laughs>